Good morning, third grade teachers and support personnel. Welcome back. Hope that everybody had a wonderful holiday and a restful winter break. Welcome back. And we hope that everyone is ready to really hit the ground, rocking and rolling and reading through this third nine weeks with our third graders. This is in a very important third week, nine weeks for our third graders, of course, as every minute and day of our school day is. But this is especially important for third graders as we are really journeying strong into the season before testing um, because when we get back in the fourth nine weeks after spring break we have one week and then our third graders will be taking FSA reading so we want to make sure that we are very intentional with our time during this third grading period so the instructional guides were developed that way um, purposely and so we just want you to know that and feel that with confidence so let's talk about um, kind of the scope and sequence quickly. This will hopefully just help with a little bit of planning for you. So in the beginning, coming back this week, we hope that you're able to take the time to reestablish your literacy environment. There is an extra section at the top of the guides to give suggestions on how to reestablish some procedures and routines that's gonna help you to really slingshot through the rest of the year with your literacy environment. So please take the time to take a look at that. Um, and then, for our comprehension focus, we are starting off weeks 19 and 20 with a two week unit, reorienting our students to informational text and all of the demands that come along with informational text and um, some a new strategy for thinking about how do we um, read through key details, gather them together into categories to help us to um, determine the main idea and then to be able to explain how those details support that main idea. So that's that two week unit allowing time for reading interim that will happen during that time for third graders. Quick note about reading interim. We know that everybody's gonna be super anxious to get that data in their hands and in their computers and start making some strong instructional decisions for your students and groups of students. And that's awesome. We wanna make sure that we use that data as soon as we can when it's fresh to make those instructional decisions. We do recommend that um, those decisions that are made based off of our interim data most heavily um, affect our decisions for guided reading and individual reading goals with students and um, that small group instruction with students, knowing that for the shared instructional piece that the um, content there and standards there were intentionally designed um, for building background knowledge and um, a, a stronger application of the standards throughout the year. As, and so the, that shared reading piece has really been intentionally designed through the guides. And so when thinking about making decisions based off of interim, again, just think about how can I make those decisions for guided reading, small group reading and individual reading goals and, and practice with students. So, um, okay, so that's with reading interim in 19 and 20, time is built into there. And um, in 19 and 20, the topic is thinking about the harsh environment of the poles, North and South Pole, who lives there and why do, do different groups of people live there? It's definitely a place in our world that students are not very familiar with. So we're intentionally building that background knowledge. We're also building that background knowledge because it's going to help them as they journey into the next unit. Um, and so those weeks 21 and 22, students are gonna be reading about mountain climbing. Again, it's another landscape that our students are not familiar with, but it's important to, for them to have understanding of those um, landscapes. And so we're gonna be building some of that knowledge and they're gonna apply that, um, the knowledge from 19 and 20 into 21 and 22. And then as they will then apply that in 23 with the two bear cubs myth and thinking about um, the mountain climbing that happens in that drama. And then we're going to move into our African American History Month and students will be reading some wonderful highlights text and one from Common Lit about Benjamin Banneger and Harriet Tubman. When we get into the this three-week unit, we're really laying um, some strong, strong instructional moves into how to tackle the demands of reading standard informational 3.8. It's definitely highly connected with reading informational standard 1.3. And you'll see in those three weeks that those two standards are connected and, and we lay some, um, some habits 
in place that students can continuously think of and use and those routines that they can think of and use as they're reading um, with the standard in mind. And so that I, when you are able to take a look at those texts, um, I would go ahead and give those texts in 24 through 26 a, a closer pre-read and maybe code the text yourself before even planning. Um, and so that then you'll be able to, to really think about how, what does this standard look like? What does this mean for my instruction? How am I going to teach this to my students? So just kind of a caution there to, to give that, those texts and those weeks an extra, extra preview before planning. That would be, that would be super helpful for your students. And then at 27 and 28, in those weeks, students are going to be um, jumping back into literature, and we're going to read um, some stories and advice column from Ask Arizona, Ask Arizona Highlights Magazine, and um, they are enjoyable texts, but they are complex as that that they are a an advice column, and um, with these two weeks, it's a nice nice. Um, layout for students to be able to read through texts, to think about the different parts of the stories and how one part builds off another part in a story, and then to be able to use that um, that kind of structural piece to then be able to go back and think about um, some important moments in the text and the theme and how the key details in the story um, help to support that theme. There will also be recounting in that section as well. Um, and there's some nice strong connections for helping students to be successful with the fiction DRA. And so you can take a look at those pieces in the guides. Um, and just to highlight, so just a note about poetry. So in week 29, there will be a focus of poetry. So we do get back to poetry before testing. Um, and there'll be also nice kind of a, a bit of a review when we get to week 29 as well. So I hope that this is helpful and um, take a look at some of the weekly um, folders. There'll be some other additional videos that are more specific for that week, but hope that this kind of helps give an overview of where we're going and um, some tips on how to use that interim data during small group to really drive that instruction um, for, for groups of learners and individual learners. Um, also, just a quick note, take, take a look at the foundational skills for each week. They are very, very, very important for our readers, knowing that vocabulary is the golden thread that weaves all text together. There's some really nice um, additional vocabulary questions that have been included into the guides and um, some tips on how to really hit those um, foundational skill standards. And um, we know that, 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 that that's only going to help our readers if we take the time to build that into our routines. So take a look there as well. Hope that this helps. And my name is Kathleen Sicarello. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions about anything within the guides for third grade. And um, hopefully I'll see you soon. I can't wait to see your students rocking and rolling and, and um, enjoying their reading in this third nine weeks. Have a great day.